Hello everyone, my name is Emma and in this video I'm going to give a short summary of my thesis, which explores the impact of circular economy on enterprise resilience. First, let's take a look at the context of this research. As you've probably heard before, we live in a very globalized world that is extremely interconnected and for that reason it is constantly changing in unpredictable ways. COVID-19, for example, is an event that surprised and disrupted companies around the globe. To prepare for such events, companies need to build resilience, the ability to survive, adapt and grow in the face of turbulent change. At the same time, awareness of environmental degradation and the need for a more sustainable and circular economy is higher than ever and is pushing firms to adapt. So clearly, resilience and circular economy are both hot topics that many companies are looking into. So that's why I thought it would be interesting to explore their relation by interviewing specialists on the topic, as well as managers at a variety of companies with a circular business model. Analyzing these interviews resulted in three main findings. A first finding is that circular companies are more resilient to shocks in the supply of raw materials. Of course, the whole idea of circular economy is to be less dependent on finite resources by recovering, reusing, remanufacturing and recycling materials. So when certain natural resources run out or become extremely expensive due to scarcity, these companies will have an alternative supply base. A second finding is that circular companies need to collaborate much more with external entities, which builds resilience. That's because in order to effectively close resource loops, supply chains will need to be fundamentally rethought and collaborations between different industries and companies will be necessary if we want to decrease environmental impact in a systemic way. But these collaborations also have a very useful side effect by enabling a visibility into supply chains that's rarely seen today, and more importantly, by enabling information to flow easily and freely. Therefore, circular supply chains have the potential to be much more adaptive and flexible when disruptions occur. And thirdly, resilience is also about adapting to societal trends. And one of today's biggest trends is arguably sustainability. Becoming circular won't only protect you from transition risks such as reputational harm or regulatory pressure, it can also boost resilience by creating a sense of trust with various stakeholders. On the downside, being circular today unfortunately often means being less profitable as environmental costs are not yet incorporated in the income statement of companies. That's why it's so important that regulations come into place so that we can give companies the economic incentives to become more sustainable. But why do these findings matter? Companies today too often rely on scarce resources, which travel through long and complex supply chains that can easily be disrupted. My research shows that being circular won't only respond to society's need for sustainability, but that it can also build resilience for entire supply chains. Something that has come high on the agenda of not only companies, but also governments and cities such as Brussels. As a city, you don't want an event such as COVID to disrupt the supply of goods and bankrupt large portions of the local economy. Instead, cities can benefit from having resilient firms that survive, adapt and grow in the face of change. And if you are a progressive city like Brussels, you also want your enterprises to be sustainable to respond to today's challenges and so that Brussels can be a front-runner among cities. To this end, it will be crucial to convince firms to embrace a circular strategy that is also resilient. My research shows how these two objectives can complement each other and form synergies, which can be interesting for companies and cities alike. Thank you for your attention and thank you also to everyone who made this thesis possible, especially my promoter, Professor Houdon, as well as all the people who agreed to have an interview with me. And finally, thank you, Innoviris, for this amazing opportunity.